All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the 29th of October as the Flyers fall and defeat yesterday against the Anaheim Ducks, a final score in the game of 7-4. We'll get to the particulars in a moment. Flyers Daily is presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. A lot of goals in this game, obviously. 11 total and a lot of assist, which means the Flyers are going to make some big-time donations along with Penn Medicine for the Penn Medicine Assist. For every Flyers assist this season, Penn Medicine and the Flyers are going to be donating 30 pounds of food to local communities in need. So Penn Medicine and the Penn Medicine Assist, and lots of them on the docket in an 11-goal game where the Flyers outshot Anaheim 31-24. Really, in the first period, the Flyers dictated the pace of play had the puck more, had a lot more more high danger chances than Anaheim did. But Anaheim, give them credit to their uh, to their very much liking, they were able to capitalize on their chances. And just 58 seconds into the game, they get on the board when Ryan Strom picks up his second goal of the season. He's the leading point getter for Anaheim coming into the game. And again, Sam Harrison getting his second start of the season, and just not an ideal way to start. I think through the two games, I think if you ask Sam Harrison, I don't think he's gotten into a rhythm of either of the games. And Strom gets from there early, 58 seconds in, gives Anaheim the one nothing lead. 15-20 on the power play. It's the Ducks who extend their lead when Frank Vitrano picks up a power play goal. Then we head to the second period, Flyers down 2 nothing, and Vitrano picks up the next goal at 6.58 to make it 3 nothing, And then Adaman Reek picks up the fourth goal of the game, 4 nothing. All of a sudden, the Anaheim Ducks, but the Flyers, a few minutes later, answer when Cam Atkinson picks up his fifth goal of the season, makes it 4-1, and just 36 seconds later, the Flyers get another one, this time from Travis Konechny. Beautiful pass, cross-ice pass from Sean Walker, and Konechny doesn't take time to get that puck on a stick and gather it and then shoot. It's all one motion right to the back of the net, bar down, went out as quickly as it went in. And now it's a 4-2 game. Flyers are back in business. That's how the second period would end. Pick it up in the third. It's the Ducks who go on the power play. Trevor Zegers picks up his first goal of the year to make it 5-2. Then Brett Leeson picked up a goal to make it 6-2. Then Travis Konecki picked up his second goal of the game. Sean Couturier and Bobby Brink pick up the assist. Uh, Vitrano scores to complete the hat trick shorthanded at 11-12. And then a little, not enough, a little too late. Joel Faraby picked up his fourth goal of the season. Uh, assisted by Bobby Brink and Noah Cates. And there's your final score, 7-4. to four. And sometimes early in an NHL season, you can see games like this. Uh, I think, you know, we looked at Minnesota. Uh, they had lost two games where they gave up seven goals, and they won a game where they gave up seven goals. Uh, you look at Carolina, one of the teams that's most notable for their structure and their disciplined and defensive and detail-oriented play. They've given up six goals in a loss to the same Anaheim team. And they've given up six goals to Colorado. They gave up seven goals, lost by an identical 7-4 score to the Seattle Kraken. So you do see these games early in a year when maybe the structure and the structure for the entire 60 minutes is not as prevalent. And I think that's what we saw here. And you saw a team capitalize on uh, some mistakes by the Flyers. You saw a team capitalize on when they got puck luck and you saw the Flyers not be able to capitalize on that and some good chances in the first period of this game even though they were trailing one nothing uh just 58 seconds in so it's one of those games like the, you grab this one it's like a piece of loose leaf paper you crinkle it up and you toss it in the wastebasket hoping you make it for two Kobe right uh you can't dwell on it it's an 82 game season I see some people freaking out on Twitter that guy should be sent down or Sam Harrison should be sent down. Sam Harrison earned the job as the backup goaltender based on what he did last year, the way he handled adversity, I think was a big part of it. And based on the camp that he had in the preseason he had, and then he has not had two good starts to start off the year. And this game in particular is one that I would refer to as a save percentage killer for a goalie. Anaheim only had 24 shots. He gave up seven goals. That's going to that's a crushing save percentage, especially early in the season. And for a backup goalie that's not going to play 50, 55 games, it's one that's going to weigh his uh, goals against average down probably for the entirety of the season. That's just the reality of the situation. 
if he plays around 25 games. Um, Sam, I don't think has, you know, given the situation has had either game, like I said before, where he could really get into the game, feel the game, develop a rhythm. You know, the first game he plays, they're on top of him right away in that one. And they get a couple of early goals. And then obviously 58 seconds into this one before the team gets down for nothing. And it kind of snowballed on him. And sometimes for a goalie, it's not the amount of shots you get. It's the kind of shots you get early into a game that can build up your confidence and put you in a position where you just feel bigger and bigger with every save you make. And some of those are just easy, clear-sighted shots from decent distance, and then everything gets easier from that point on. Uh, that has not been the case in these two games for Sam Harrison. Uh, I know the Flyers are carrying three goalies right now in Felix Sandstrom. It's not affecting Harrison in his preparation in any way, shape, or form. That's my belief. I've been out of practice and see Sam Harrison takes every rep he's supposed to. The three goalie, the really the only one that it affects is Felix Anstrom, who doesn't get the reps in practice that Harrison and Carter Hart are getting. I think they had this one circled on the calendar to get Harrison in and not in a situation where it's been two weeks, two plus weeks uh, since his last game played. Um, but it was a struggle for him in this game. It, it's a team sport. I thought the Structure in front of him at times broke down and the puck luck for Anaheim was there. That's hockey. That's in a nutshell. It, this is not a game. It's one game to freak out over. Um, just like I've said in yesterday's episode, I think it was. Uh, you're not as good as you are. You think you are when you've played a really good game and you're not as bad as you are that you may think you are when you've just come off a really bad game. So the, the truth lies somewhere in the middle of that. So this is the recent game. It was a disappointing game, the second game of a four-game homestand. Uh, but the Flyers will have to use it, regroup, learn from it, and move forward into the game coming up on Monday against uh, a team in Carolina, a very good team that hasn't gotten off to a particularly great start. Um, does that make Carolina more dangerous? Or, look, I think they're more dangerous if they're, they've been playing really well. We'll see. They've won their last two. We'll see how it kind of plays out when we get to Monday night against Carolina at Wells Fargo Center for the final two games of the home stand. It's Carolina Monday, and then on Wednesday, it'll be the Buffalo Sabres, um, another team that has got a lot of talent there, but we'll see how those teams are. Sometimes it's not who you play, it's when you play them. And Flyers got Anaheim feeling pretty good right now. They went into Boston and won in overtime. Anaheim's off to a pretty good start as well. Uh, Carolina, like I said, who we'll see on Monday, is one point ahead of the Flyers, but they've played two more games. They've played five games, or nine games rather, they're five and four on the season, 10 points tied with the Rangers, who have also played seven games like the Flyers, 10 points, and the Flyers with nine points, a record of four, uh, two and one. So, you know, it's a situation, or excuse me, four, three and one. Flyers played eight games. So it's a situation where you just got to learn from this, move forward, and not dwell on it. And I think John Tortorella is fully aware that this isn't something, you know, to when your team's gotten off to a good start structurally and those things, this isn't one to berate them on or make a huge uh, Achilles last stand at. We'll see how they react to it. Again, there's these moments early in a season that can determine where your team is going from a, a makeup standpoint, from a belly standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, going down in games, how they react to that, you know, battling back in games. We saw that, Against Dallas, we saw that against Minnesota when they got within one. And then how they react coming off a loss. If I think back to the 1920 season, Elaine Vino's first year, that Flyers team, I think it was from January 3rd to the second round against the Islanders in the bubble. They had not lost back-to-back -back games. I mean, that's an incredible feat for a very large sample size to not lose two games in a row. They rebounded off of every loss. Look, they headed humming from January through when the league was paused on March 19th. But to not lose back-to-back -back games, that told you something about that team at the time. It's a shame they went into the bubble and they couldn't carry that. But the ability to not let one loss turn into two, not let two losses turn into three, that's why that team was every bit legit before the season was called with the pandemic hitting this team, we'll see how they react to this. They've lost games this season. They've reacted well. And you lose that game in Vegas three to two heartbreak fashion. You play a really good game on the road. 
They score with under 33 seconds left to win the game 3-2. Stanley Cup champs undefeated at that point. It would have been a pretty substantial win for the psyche of that of this Flyers team to go into Vegas and hand them their first loss. It didn't happen. But it then became, after that game was over, how do they react to it? And they went into that Minnesota game. And through the first two periods, they dominated Minnesota. Minnesota showed some pushback in the third. And then the Flyers regained control of the game and it ultimately won the game running away. So how will they react to this? Well, we're going to find that out Monday and Wednesday when they take on Carolina and the Buffalo Sabres. So we'll see where it goes from here. We'll see how it plays out, but it's not one to to dwell on and start making proclamations. See, I told you this team wasn't going to be any good. It was not a good game. It's a not a good result, but it's not what defines them at this early point in this NHL season. Still a lot of things going to define this Flyers team. So coming up on uh, tomorrow's episode, Monday's episode, we'll have Bill Meltzer. We're going to talk about the week that was. Is this now, coming off this loss, an opportunity for John Tortorella to get Morgan Frost back in the lineup? That's probably the biggest storyline byproduct of the loss against the Anaheim Ducks. Is this the time to get Morgan Frost back in in the lineup and see how he can perform and see how he can, what he can do to not let them take him back out of the lineup. And if you're going to put him back in, who are you taking out? That's the big question. To me, the really the only viable option would be to take Tyson Forster out, let him see a game or however many it is from upstairs in the press box. We're starting to see a little bit of this with Leo Carlson, oddly enough of the Anaheim ducks where they're not having him play every game. He's taking some games where they're not trying to overload him. I'm not saying Tyson Forster's overloaded. I don't even think he's been a net negative player. He's definitely squeezing it a little bit. He had a great opportunity in the game against Anaheim and passed up the shot. To me, that's a little telling. He's a shoot first mentality guy, a guy that most times is I'll take the shot and answer questions later. That's what he's done at all levels, including the AHL and last year, with the Flyers, when he passed up that shot, that was hmm, that was odd to me. So we'll see if Morgan Frost does indeed come back into the lineup, or if there's any other lineup changes along the blue line. I imagine we'll see Carter Hart come Monday night uh, against the Carolina Hurricanes. But we'll discuss all that with Bill and and the week that's ahead, the week that was, some good things in the week, but uh, the re, you know the lasting game is that seven four loss. We'll talk about that as well. So join us uh, coming up Monday, and we'll preview Flyers. Canes on Monday's episode as well. Join us then for a brand new episode of Flyers Daily.